Hardware, your store of first choice. By Columbia 300. And by Budweiser, proud sponsor of the 1988 U.S. Olympic team. This Bud's for you. Welcome everyone to Country Lanes in San Antonio, Texas for the championship round finals of the $75,000 Columbia 300 Senior Open. And now let's run down tonight's top five and starting from the number five position, it's 55-year-old Bob Kowalik of Dayton, Ohio. His opponent in the opening match is John Handegard, a championship round finalist last week in Canton. The winner of that opening chess will then face Troy, Missouri's Billy Walden. The Senior Tour's leading money winner, Dick Weber, will then start from the number two position this evening. While 54-year-old Tita Semez will need to win just one game in order to notch his third career PBA Seniors Championship. Hi, everybody. I'm Denny Schreiner, and welcome to Country Lanes in San Antonio, Texas. And what finer fashion to finish up the PBA Summer Tour on ESPN than to have the Seniors Championship. And joining me once again, Mike Durbin. And Mike, your earmark for the Seniors Tour, how long will it be? Well, it's not long. I can hardly wait. Only 33 more months. I know that you're uh, chomping at the bit to get a shot at Weber and Semez and some of these players. Let's talk about the main story this week. Tita Semez, he's the dominant player on the tour. He has led this one from wire to wire. Yes, he certainly has, Dan. As we can see by this graphic, he has been first in every single round, all six rounds. The only player to be able to do that in the last year and a half is... Tita Semez. He did it last year at the Treasure Coast Open, Senior Open in Fort Pierce, Florida. He won that one. Maybe he's going to win this one also. Well, he made four consecutive championship rounds and then just missed last week in Canton. He's coming back with a vengeance here this evening. Semez is bowling terrific, but the four other players on the telecast this evening have all bowled exceptionally well and like the outside line. Well, Dan, we have seven titles, seven senior titles. In fact, eight senior titles on the telecast tonight. The thing about tonight is all of the players, except for Billy Walden, are going to be playing the outside line, right around near the first arrow. It's the favorite line of Dick Weber, of Bob Kowalik, of Tita Semez, of John Handigard. The reason it's the favorite is because they all throw the ball reasonably straight, but they can carry from that outside angle. So it's really anybody's ball game. Tita's got to be the favorite, but any of these guys can beat him. Well, some quality players just missed the championship round here this evening, Carmen Salvino being one, and I guess that basically shows the viewers and the other senior players that it's not as easy to make it to the championship round now that they have so many players. Well, we do have so many players, Dan. Last week, we had 138 players making our uh, tournament. This week, 121. What's happened, Dan, is that a lot of players that didn't bowl regularly on the national tour because they were raising a family, they had a career, now have got the family launched, they're financially a little bit better off, but they still have that competitive desire inside, so they come out here and satisfy that competitive fire by bowling on the senior tour. Well, we should have an exceptional telecast for you here this evening. Tita Semez has led this one all week long. Will he end up the champion? Well, we'll just have to wait and see. Opening match, though, coming up next between Dayton's Bob Kowalik and also John Handegard. When you've got a job to do, go with a winner. True Value Hardware Store. Seal up to five windows drum tight with the 3M window insulator kit, just $9.99. Get a bonus roll of Scotch 35 millimeter film. Brighten areas with GE 75 or 150 watt floodlights, only $244 each. And clean up dry debris or wet spills with the Hoover Double Duty Hand Vac, just $29.99. And make True Value Hardware your store of first choice. What can you expect when you invest at Schwab? Ask a Schwab customer. My experience is Schwab people are professional and helpful. But what's most important is they're not out to sell you something you don't want or need. When I want to buy a particular stock and the market's closed, I simply pick up the phone and call Schwab. And yes, they're there, 24 hours a day. A few years back, I found I had some money to invest. I'd had some prior experience with a full commission broker, but now I learned enough to make my own investing decisions. It's easy to do business at Schwab. They're efficient, accurate, and very courteous. For a free booklet, what a discount broker can do for you, call toll-free 800-247-3500. That's 800-247-3500. Call Schwab now. September is supercharged on the ESPN. It's a controversial challenge. 
see ESPN's live America's Cup coverage. A weekly stampede of college football is unleashed with top-notch matchups. Leading drivers race for important points in exciting live NASCAR, Formula One, and IndyCar events. And see the championship of Australian rules football live from down under. September, a sports spectacular on ESPN. Welcome back, everybody, to San Antonio, Texas. Opening match here, the $75,000 Columbia 300 Senior Open between Bob Kowalik and John Handegard. Handegard will start left on uh, lane 37, 37 and 38, the championship pair, and uh, first time we've ever had him here, so it should be an interesting show. And John has promised us he's not going to waste half a game playing inside this week. He's going to go right to the outside angle immediately. Well... He struggled just a bit last week in Canton, although the last three or four frames he bowled very well, but he starts out this week, and well, I guess he has learned his lesson. Well, that's where the play players have been in, in scoring, knocking down the most pins all week long. And uh, like I say, when you can play out there, it used to be my favorite angle then. You know, you just get a little more confidence because that ball's coming in from that angle, and you start uh, ripping a few five pins that you normally don't do. Bob Kowalik, who averaged 233 plus on the championship pair this week with his first offering and right back at hand to guard comes the X this one on the right hand lane when you talk about intensity this guy Bob really said. shows it he jokes and laughs or anything before I noticed it in the practice before uh Getting ready for tonight's telecast. Boy, he wasn't saying much. He was deadly serious. And Handigard, he was over practicing by himself. He's dead. <laughs> Everybody seems to be taking this pretty serious today. Tita Semez has been quiet as a church mouse here before the telecast. He's gearing up to bowl from the number one position. Is it a double to open things up? Yes. The 10 pin, the last to leave. But Kowalik starts quickly on the championship there. It was amazing because I thought Kowalik came up at the line. He looked very straight legged as he hit that line. Normally he has a knee bent more than that. But the ball rolled right up in there in the 1-3. John Handegard with a clutch double and a nine count to edge Carmen Salvino in the position round game to get here to the championship round. After Carmen had struck out to make him do that. Yep. Boy, what a finish last night. Handegard trying to match pace, and he does. The six pin helping out nicely on the right hand left. Ooh, just kind of leaning on that 10 pin. Just enough, huh? Had a chance to uh, play golf with John earlier today, along with Janie Brooks, our host, and my partner, Mr. Durbin, and uh, whew, we didn't bring that course to its knees, did we? <laughs> we finished, though. <laughs> wow. John Handegard, his best ever PBA finish, second in the 1978 Salt Lake City Open, lost to Wayne Chester. And he, he uh, a very bad memory of that tournament because he was way ahead with three games to go and he ran into a little trouble. Certainly a good enough player to have a PBA title. Is it three in a row? Oh my, a little bit of a swisher moving around on 37. So we've had five shots and five strikes. Well, he can't do any better than this. <clears throat> he definitely trusts it. Four steps. Kind of went over the top a little bit of that ball. The ball didn't really finish that hard, but just enough to get out that four, five, seven. Again, that outside angle. Good carry. Wallach starts with a double, and believe it or not, he trails by 10. That's to hurry. And did. Woo! Six for six, then. Wallach showing some fingers on that shot. I think he even surprised himself. Now watch it. He really didn't lift it that hard. It's just dry out there. Watch it come back and shred the rack. Wasn't his ace shot, but he got a strikeout. Yeah, let's see if he can tighten up the line a little bit here on lane 37. A little more speed. And left the 10. Interesting. That almost looked like a better shot than the one before, and this one gets nine. Well, that's what <laughs> drives bowlers crazy. The better shots, you leave the 10 pins, and the other shots you carry. Sometimes that's the way it works. He got a little more speed, a little more oomph behind that shot, but it broke a little late, came in behind the head pin and left the soft 10. Now he needs to get his concentration together, make sure that he converts his 10 pin. Bob's high game, 259 this week. He'd like to post that in game number one here this evening. Cross lane. Nice job of picking off the 10. And so Handegard leads by one in a very 
closely fought match here in the opening game of the $75,000 Columbia 300 Senior Open. We'll be right back. I was new to the Lancaster area and didn't know my way around it when my car died. Fortunately, I did know to call Cotman Transmission. They towed my car and did a free 21-point courtesy check. Luckily, they caught the problem in time. So instead of paying hundreds of dollars for an overhaul, I'm only paying a little for a simple transmission repair. Thanks, Cotman, for honest, dependable work. For Cotman's free 21-point courtesy check, see John or Joe at 401 Harrisburg Avenue in Lancaster. Thanks to Lita, I got the right training and now I have a job I want. Lita showed me how to put my strengths and interests to work in a job that really means something to me. You can't beat it. Lita's job training programs and career services are first rate and they're free. I'm well on my way to independence and a secure future for myself and my family. Thanks, Lita. Stop by the Lita office at 128 East Grant Street, Lancaster or call 291-1231 for information on how you can get into training for today's job. And a guard and Kowalik deadlocked here in a very, very tightly contested opening match. Three straight for Hand of Guard as he leads by one. And he has a strike here to maintain that lead. Has bowled extremely well since entering the senior ranks. And he's bowled real well since he bowled the doubles. He was bowled team with Mark Roth in that particular tournament, and he was struggling a little bit. Asked Roth for a couple of pointers. Roth, uh, I don't know what he told him, but he gave him some pointers. He started to bowl better. If you're going to ask somebody for advice, he'd be one of the guys you'd want to chat with. Nice firm shot right up the track. This one breaks a little sharply, though, through the head pin, and so the 6-10 remains. It's interesting, as I talked to the different uh, players on the telecast tonight, some thought the left lane hooked more, others thought the right lane hooked more. Personally, I think John feels the right lane is hooking more, and he just did not get that ball out to where he needs to. Try to drill it in there and line drive it in there and hook. Following up from that championship round appearance last week, back-to-back -back shows, as it were. So he made... Uh, championship round three times and doesn't quite cover the six so a mistake for hand to guard in the fourth and Kuala quickly got up and changed seats see what happens is the mind is thinking I don't want to chop it so he gives it too much room and remember you got to hit that lead pin or you can't make the spare and he's thinking oh no brother more than anything that disrupt disrupts your mental thinking and your emotional stability at the time you have to Disregard it, start from scratch again, come back and, and make a good shot. Good extension. That one hooked a little bit too much, but the four pin tripped out nicely. So Handegard bounces back, but he has the first miscue of the evening. Four steps. Straight falls. See how the back is bent? Gets that back bends too far sometimes. It almost went high. I think he was high, but he got a strike. Kowalik leads by 13. Interesting, when Bob makes his ace shot, he gets that ball about 18 inches over the foul line. And he's real crisp with it. He's watching this shot now. He's just let it go. And cha-cha-cha. Well, he's been uh, mastering those moves for, what, about 30, 35 years, bold with a couple of the beer teams back in the old days. Really a very fine player. Son, very good bowler as well. Gonna back up, asks for the carry and gets a swisher, and so a quick double in the fifth and the sixth lifts Qualic now to a 23-pin advantage. See, and that's 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 match play bowling at its best. Your opponent opens and you come right back and jump on it with a double. He trusted this one all the way. Now he puts Handigard in the sixth frame in almost a must-strike situation. And a guard looking to double. Better shot on this right hand lane, but once again through the nose and lucky to leave just the six pin. So he just is not trusting it over there, Dan. He's got to give it room. 
got to give it room on that right lane. It's going to come back. <laughs> Practice balls you hear to the right on lanes 43 and 44 being thrown by Billy Walden and Dick Weber. They qualified number three and number two. No problem with the six this time, but uh, better late than never, I guess, huh? Well, yeah, but he's 23 pins behind. Even if he strikes in this frame and Kowalik can step up in his turn and uh, put the match away. John's match play record this week, 10 wins and 8 losses. Keep in mind, only 18 finalists on the senior tour, although that number will change, I guess, next year. Is that correct? That's the uh, plan to go to 24 finalists. But they would year. still bowl 18 games of match play. That's right. Okay. Much better, shot, yeah. much better shot. Much better For everybody at home wondering how in the world is that going to work with 24 finalists and only eight bowling 18 games, you just won't bowl everybody in the finals. So then that'll be the luck of the draw in some cases too, won't it? Well, there's a way that we can uh, hopefully do it through computer to prorate the strength of your opponent by position where they qualify so that everybody comes out bowling somewhat of a balanced schedule. Okay. Leave it up to the old computer. It solves all the problems. Well, if that doesn't work, we'll just have Harry Golden, the national tournament director, put the pencil to it because he has the experience to do that. Well, we're at the midway point of match number one. Kowalik leads by 24, and he'd like to build on that. When we come back, we'll find out if he can do so. I remember when Stan and Wood was one big, messy headache. One coat was never enough. But with Carver Trip, it's different. Thick and color rich, not thin and watery. Twice as much pigment as other stains. Real pigment, too. Best of all, it's easy to use. Why, just one coat gives you perfect results. The way I see it, when you buy Carver Trip, you're buying top quality. <laughs> Opportunity can't knock, unless it's on your doorstep. Subscribe to the Wall Street Journal. Call 800-372-3000 for this great journal subscription offer. 13 weeks for just $29.75 with a money-back guarantee. 13 weeks, $29.75. Phone 800-372-3000 now for the Wall Street Journal. As the world's finest athletes gather in Seoul, ESPN Sports Center captures the spirit of the games with daily coverage from the 24th Olympiad. Beginning Friday at 7 Eastern, America's athletes set their sights on Seoul on the ESPN Sports Center. And there's a great way to balance the old checkbook, especially if you finish first this week. First place is a nice little sizable check. There are $8,000, nothing to sneeze at. The winner of this game will advance. The loser will collect $3,100. Terrific field this week. Very strong field. And only five survivors. Qualic leads by 24 with a double up in the fifth and the sixth. A lot of room. Too much. He didn't want to go high. That's it. That was a defensive shot thinking, I'm this far ahead, I don't want to throw it through the nose, way too much. Let me ask you this question, the last shot on the right-hand lane, he was close to throwing it in the same area, and he struck. Well, he had absolutely no lift, and he gave it all the way out to the first board then. He, he didn't go that far out the last time. No, but what I'm saying is, is that he felt comfortable in doing so, or no? I'll tell you what, he threw it dead right the last trip and struck. As he converts the spare, well, you still got to put the little fingers in it. He didn't have too much in that shot. Just well, kind of dumped it out to that area and hoped the lane would bring it back, and it just didn't do it. We'll see what he does the, the following shot. shot. Sure. Right, well, the shot, next shot on 38, we'll see if he gives it that much room. But uh, I know that he is uh, a big fan of the championship bowling series. He's one of the stars of that series many, many years ago. Well, he won the series when he defeated Pat Patterson back in 1959. That was the year I graduated from high school, and I watched him on television do that. Was it in black and white? Yes, it was in black and white. Well, he's trying to win some 20-plus years later. Nice shot there. On the left-hand lane, lane 37. Lead now 21, so it's time for John Handegar to double up and get back in the match. 
it's a must situation for him. Eighth frame, down by 21. He's not out of it. He can still strike out uh, for two, what is it, 235? Got that one out. Oh, my. Still hooked back. Well, he's being fooled by the right-hand lane, shaking his head on the way back. He threw that one further right than the other two, and it still broke through the And house. firmer, which means that he's got to make a move left with his feet, at least one board, maybe two. He's got to finish on this lane, too, then, and he picked to finish on that lane. Everybody else picked to finish on 37? Right. Mm -hmm. Hangs up a little bit in it, but... Uh, Kicks out the 4 7. I think John. a little frustration shot there. Kind of zip it at the spare, you know? I don't think there's any question John enjoys bowling in the Columbia events. You know, he made his first ever championship round appearance in the, uh, the 1980 Columbia 300 Open in Sarasota, Florida, where he er, placed fourth, I should say. Lost in his opening match uh, to Joe Berardi, 245 to 204. Still could shoot 223, but he's got to get started, and that now is out the window as well as he leaves the 396. Oh, boy. That's just, uh, just about in the trash can, <laughs> as far as John Hanegard is concerned. Amazing. Hanegard comes out and goes strike, 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 misses the 610, and after that, it was uh, kind of some soul-searching going on out there. Yeah, just was totally lost after the wheels came right on off. If he has any hope at all, he's got a spare here, and he makes a nice shot to cover up the 396. Kowalik has room for 256. Not a bad game. Pencil it in every time. Five steps. Pretty shot. That one didn't come near the two or three boards. No, 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 no. Much tighter line than that. So the other shots were errant shots. Yeah. Especially the one in the uh, seventh frame. So moving on into game number two will be Bob Kowalik. Well, Billy Walden is going to come out, I'm sure, is going to be throwing some strikes. He's going to be playing a little bit further to left than John Handyguard was. He's going to be right around the ninth, tenth board. A little more oil right there. As we mentioned in the open, uh, the majority of the players playing out as the week wore on. Does he trip the four? Not quite. But he is a winner nonetheless. So Bob Kowalik out of Dayton, Ohio, advances into game number two. Well, one hurdle down, three more to go. John Handegard will finish up fifth. The end of a very lucrative summer tour for him. I've asked him if he'll be down at uh, Fort Pierce in a Treasure Coast PBA Championship in October, and he said, you bet. Right now, though, Kowalik is going to have to go through three senior champions. They've all won. And they've all won this PBA Seniors Championship, the one that gives the eligibility to the Firestone Tournament of Champions. That's right, and his next opponent, Billy Walden, was the player who beat him when he was the top seed in Canton, Ohio. What That's a great right. match that was. Yeah, where Kowalik struck out from the fifth frame and forced Walden to get the first one in the tenth and got it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, well, they might be thinking back to that match a little bit. They sure might. I know Kowalik will be. Crosses over, but it doesn't make any difference. A beautiful 234 for Bob Kowalik as he advances into game number two. John Handegard off to a very fast start, but lost his momentum when he missed the 610 and just was never able to regain the form. And the type of player he is, you see how he made the move anyway, Dan, on that lane. It didn't matter at all, but he made his move left and threw the ball a little bit further right, got the strike. He's always working like that. He's a practicer. He's fidgety. He has all different things in his bag. He has grips. He has wrist devices. He has rosin bags. He has tape. Always trying a little bit of everything to get the edge, but a very talented player. I don't think there's any doubt that he's going to win something out here on the senior tour. It's just going to take a while, perhaps. Hey, oh, it's so easy. What impresses me about him, though, so much is his work ethic. He just is such a hard worker. He practices a lot. Oh, I like his demeanor, too. You could probably go up to John right now and ask him for an autograph. He'd be more than happy to give it to you. Some guys would be storming away. That's uh, possibly true. 
Well, he'd like to finish out on a high note, and he does. Three strikes in the tenth, but it's too little too late. 234 to 210. Kowalik beats Handy Guard, but uh, coming up in just a moment or so, a lesson for the ladies, the average builders. Remember when movies were 50 cents, hamburgers a quarter, and you could put a nickel on the jukebox and listen to this? Atlantis Direct Marketing presents Jukebox Jive, one of the greatest treasuries of rock and roll memories ever put on two albums. Remember Danny and the Juniors. Jukebox Jive, a fabulous two-record collector set with every original song performed by the original artists. This deluxe two-record treasury is an exclusive TV offer and is not available anywhere else at any price. Order your copy of this exclusive two-record set now and have the greatest jukebox jive hits of rock and roll for your own. Here's how to order yours. Have your credit card ready and call 1-800-544-1000 or send $14.95 for LPs or cassettes, $16.95 for CD, plus $3 shipping to Jukebox Jive, Box 50, Department E, Los Angeles, California. This fabulous collection of 20 great original hits is like having a jukebox in your own home. Order now. That's 1-800-544-1000. And let's take a look at our weekly average board. Uh, all bowlers, 190.01. The left-handers out bowling the right-handers this week. Just ever so slightly, a couple pins there. Uh, didn't need a whole lot to uh, make our top 18 or to get a check out of this tournament. Rather low-scoring senior tournament this week in San Antonio. And let's talk about some of the stars. Ah, smiling Dick Weber. How in the world did he shoot 761? Well, he did it with his powerful bowling ball. And we could see that the... High games there. A number of guys had 279. Weber again showing his uh, consistency with uh, 15 consecutive 200s. And Tita just kept rolling those 200 games. 26 out of a possible 36. Yeah, not too bad. Once he got lined up, he bowled very well all week long. Good crowd on hand here in San Antonio. They love their bowling, especially the senior tour here at Country Lanes. And uh, they're excited about having the tour perhaps back next year and let's take a look at some of the other players that had great weeks Carmen just mix mickey spezio former champion ski Perevsky in the finals this week warren mm -hmm. hay the seniors tours answer to bob hanley <laughs> john hersina got a check jb blaylock les zykes right in there bill beach former champion glenn allison uh, one of my favorite seniors les schisler tying for 32nd buzz oswald jack king got a check tommy t tommy tuttle finishing 39th well all you ladies, listen up, because uh, coming up in just a moment or so, Mike Durbin's Average Builder. Last week's tip was geared toward our senior citizens. This week, I th like, thought I'd like to gear the tip toward many, but not all of the ladies in our audience. I can't tell you how many ladies have come up to me in all the years that I've been involved in bowling and asked me, how can I change from a backup ball? Well, in order to understand how to change from a backup ball, you need to first understand what causes it. And one of the primary causes is simply one of the many wonderful ways that men are made different from women. When a man hangs his arm down at the side like so, he wants to hang basically pretty straight. However, when a lady hangs her arm down at the side, at least many ladies, the bottom part of the arm points out to the right a little bit. So when she has her hand right straight behind the bowling ball, her natural tendency is to turn the hand this way, causing the ball to go left to right down the lane. In other words, a backup ball. Now many instructors simply tell this same lady to put their hand behind the ball and to turn it this way with a hand going around the ball. If you can do that, that'll work. The trouble is with most gals, once they get their thumb right of 12 o'clock, that natural tendency, like this, wants to take over and the backup ball remains. I have a different solution. Take your hand and turn it over with the thumb at 10 o'clock, just about like so. About like I would shake hands or pick up my suitcase or how you might pick up your cosmetic case. You put your hand in the ball that same way with the thumb at 10 o'clock, just like this, and you swing it all the way throughout the swing that same way with the thumb staying at 10 o'clock. Now, as I go to let go of the ball and make my natural normal hand release, the thumb will want to move up toward 12 o'clock like this. The fingers will lift the ball from behind like so, causing the ball to roll right between the thumb and the fingers, which is a full roller, and you'll get a gentle hook down the lane. So remember, 
you want to get rid of the backup ball, get the thumb left of 12 o'clock all the way throughout the swing, make the normal natural hand release, and see if that doesn't cure the problem. I hope you've enjoyed these average builders this summer. We'll see you again next summer. The last time Billy Walden and Bob Kowalik met on national television, it was in 1985. Walden won, but this time it could be payback. We'll be right back. Have you noticed how attractive bordered landscaping increases the beauty of homes and businesses? Every so often, man's ingenuity manages to revolutionize an industry. Introducing the Creative Curb Business Opportunity, a breakthrough in the landscape border business. At about one-third the cost of conventional concrete borders, the Creative Curb machine is causing a boom in the landscaping border business. I like working outside. I like being my own boss. And I really make a good profit. This Creative Curb offer includes a turnkey package to help establish you in the landscape border business. I have several crews working. They average five to 8,000 feet a month, and that's good profit for me. If you would like to find out more about this outstanding business opportunity and have $22,000 to invest, call this toll-free number right now. Take control of your future with this outstanding offer from Creative Curb. Call 1-800-445-8000 toll-free right now. Billy Walden and Bob Kowalik in match number two. And uh, we're thinking back, I'm sure, to 1985 in Canton, Ohio, which is where they last met. Billy Walden getting the better of Kowalik, but what a classic match that was. Well, let's hope this was just as good. Walden will never waste much time. First shot, and he leaves the dinner bucket. Five pin wiggles a little bit, but uh, not the way he wanted to open up. Oh, and the machine just swept all four pins off spot, so we're going to have a little delay here as they put the 2458 back up on spot. Uh, even the best of machines malfunction now and then. Well, we might take this uh, little time out to, to start thanking some people that have uh, been involved with the summer tour and helping you and I throughout uh, 1988, of course, on the PBA staff, the public relations director, Kevin Shippey, along with uh, the press crew, Jim Collins, and also Mike Sands, and in the truck, Frank Ellenberg, Butch Soper, our statistician, Chuck Pierce, Larry Lickstein, of course, the player services director, and Kurt Schmidt, uh, who will be leaving the PBA after this event, uh, going to head back down south, I believe, and so thanks to all those guys for a job well done, and uh, without their help, we certainly couldn't put the show on each and every week the way we do. They all contribute, and we're still having machine problems right here. The mechanic now is going to knock them over by hand here, as we can see, the six pin now. Now, see, this would be the key to my game. If I could find someone to follow me around in an event and, and kind of hand knock down some of the pins that I don't physically, I, I think I could improve, Mike. Do you think we could do an average builder next year on that? Uh, well, we could do one on that day. I don't know how legal that would be with the ABC <laughs> or PBA or WIBC or anything. <laughs> I come up with an idea and you you just quench it, quell it right off the bat. Oh boy, after the slight break in the action, Billy Walden steps up and uh, converts the dinner bucket. That's no easy task. Especially after the delay. That's what <laughs> I mean. <laughs> All that time to think about that's fair. Right. Kowalik going to practice swing a little bit. Bob Kowalik with seven strikes. Shot 234 in the opening game. Handegard had seven strikes as well and only shot 210. Just where you get them and how many in a row. Sink. It kind of went over the top of that ball, just a little bit, spun it a little bit more. Again, not his ace shot, but he got the strike. One would believe that there's a little room on lane 38 to throw it a touch to the right and get it back. Seems to be that way. Bob sold his uh, bowling center in the Dayton area a couple of years ago and is now involved in a Moto Photo franchise and developing pictures. He and his son, and uh, he's very excited about it. That, of course, opening up in the Dayton area. Photo, photo. Yeah, if you're in the Dayton area and you want to get those uh, pictures developed, just stop by and see Bob. Good speed. Ooh, good reaction there. The two pin says four pin. Goodbye. Spoken like a player who tripped many a four in his own time. Well, he had to. The average 180. Five step player. Holds the ball out there. Look at how steady the head is. Watch the follow through. He helped that one just a little bit. He usually doesn't do that. 
Walden doesn't wait for anything. And he just slashes the rack on the right-hand lip. Power of the ball. Billy out of Troy, Missouri. Has battled those younger players in the Midwestern region for a good many years. And he's beaten them more times than he's lost, I'd venture to say. He's not afraid of them, let's put it that way. Nope. He'll shoe it up with just about anybody. Trying to get even. <laughs> he does. <laughs> that didn't take long. I tell you, we have five Billy Waldens on the telecast tonight. We'd have a half hour to spend out there at the end of the show tonight. <laughs> I'll tell you. Yes, sir. He does uh, not waste a lot of time. Well, Kowalik takes a look at the rack. And it was not his first order of business, so he will not get the re-rack. Right, see, what he had done is, again, he's not familiar with all of our rules. And he picked up that ball and looked at the re-rack and said, I don't like it, give me a re-rack. And Harry said, it wasn't your first order of business, I can't give it to you. So let's see what he can do with it. He's backing up, running it out, and it's uh, double team time on the seven pin that finally falls. And so it's Kowalik this game that starts with the first three. Now, he hit it perfect to get that strike. Watch it come in light here, and everything will just kind of fold in slow motion to the left. And he knows it's light. And it's always interesting how it's light. The bowlers are moving left. Well, he started the opening game with three in a row against John Handegard. Now he's come right back against Walden. He leads by 10. Give it room. He did that last time when he was a solid 10. He went three in a row, week 10. This one was solid. Come on back, Bob. Come on. Come on back. Boy, he gets irritated when he leaves those 10 pins. He was about three pair down after that shot. Well, I understand. I used to leave a couple of those, and I get mildly irritated now and then. <laughs> mildly irritated. Huh. Okay. If you believe that, folks, you'll believe just about anything. Cross lane, and he has it. So Qualic near perfect here in game number two. And he leads Billy Walden by nine pins, but still plenty of bowling left here in game number two. Kay Murphy's got a new development going up. They built my son's house. I knew that. Fine job. Old-fashioned workmanship. Let's go take a look. All right. Easy to find. Right by 283. Only took us five minutes from Elizabethtown. And you drive like my mother. Global Leaf Station, fancy name. It's a real nice neighborhood. Look at those homes. They do a nice job, fellas. They know that. K. Murphy and Company, contemporary know-how with yesterday's quality and pride. Who are those old guys? Fred Gregg Buick introduces an all-new Audible Standard under the hood of fuel-injected 2.8-liter V6 with solid-state ignition. Standard. With four-wheel independent suspension and four-wheel power disc brakes. Standard. A luxury that surrounds you with total comfort. All standard. All starting at under $13,000. It's the all-new Buick Regal. Take command of the American road with the 1988 Regal from Fred Gregg. The great American road belongs to Buick. All the best plays, all the top stories, from headline makers to record breakers, get all the news on This Week in Sports, every Sunday morning at 10.30 Eastern on ESPN. And how anxious is Billy Walden to go up there and try and throw a turkey? About 30 seconds ago, right in the middle of our station break, he was ready to go up and bowl, and Chuck Pisano had to nearly throw the rope around him to bring him back. I saw him with, whoa, boy. Well, this horse right here is ready to go run. They're screaming for a strike. And oh, the late fall of the 10 shows the fist. And Walden comes back with a turkey of his own. 8-10 were the last two to go down, but they both went. Billy probably turns the ball more than any of the guys on the senior telecast tonight. Moves the ball a little bit more than... He'd have been close. But, uh, he's going to get a lot of action. Career stats, 7-5 and five in the championship round with an average of 207.7. Trying to make it four in a row. He's back ahead in the match. A little bit of a swisher. And these two seniors right now are making 37 and 38 look rather easy. 
Darlene Walden. She's happy right now. Her husband's got a 11-pin uh, lead and four in a row. Kowalik's got three in a row, solid 10. He finds himself behind. Yeah, well, the Dayton Flyer, watch him come back here on the right-hand lane. Hit it. Yeah, but not enough. Just a hair soft. Right on line, but just a hair soft with that speed. And you know what the difference is in that? It's simply the fact that he was behind and not ahead. The adrenaline wasn't pumping enough, and it would make that speed just a little bit more for him to get that solid strike. No mistakes. So Kualik has to settle for the nine pin spare and now he trails by a dozen well still match is only halfway over 12 pins we've seen in many of our telecasts the past 12 weeks can disappear <laughs> with a blink of an eye of course we mentioned several of the players who have helped us out uh, graphically in the truck throughout the summer mr 900 glenn allison in the truck this evening he knows something about strikes <laughs> he certainly does <laughs> Soft again. Over the top of the ball, soft again. Is that something that uh, that normally happens, Mike, in the middle of a championship round? It just seems that, uh, I think, it's just defensive bowling rather than aggressive bowling. Billy Walden's put that four-bagger on him, and he just wasn't re able to respond to that challenge, those two frames. First order of business now to convert the 6-10 and try and regroup a little bit. If I were down there on the bench talking to him and his coach, I would simply say, hey, just get a little more aggressive and pick up your speed here. Billy trying to take a stranglehold on this match, though. Trying to make it five in a row, and the seven pin stands. I don't know what pin it was that danced around. It must have been the four pin, but <laughs> there was definitely a bunch of pins going around that seven, and nothing hit it. But something goes by it on the left of the, of the seven pin. Let's see if we can see it. Watch the head pin. It's probably going to be that one. Head pin goes to the wall, hits the four, and then it's the head pin that bounces around and just missed the wow. Head pin does a somersault and just misses the seven. So Walden spares. In the sixth and leads by 13. Waiting in the wings, the splendid splinter from St. Louis, Dick Weber. With the golden arms. Yep. And Tita Semez, the top seed, also practicing and preparing for the championship match. Well, Qualley got his wish. He just wanted Walden to stop striking. You know, he didn't want to necessarily get a split or anything. Just stop striking. Billy's match play record, 12 wins, 6 losses this week. Average on the television pair, 191. Oh, he twisted that one. Pretty shot. He's doing better than 191 right now. Walden just ripped the rack on lane 37. He leads by 13 as he obviously liked this shot. Now can Kowalik bounce back? Well, we'll be back in a moment to find out. Well, well, fancy these faucets. So fabulous. They appear to cost a fortune, but don't. For well, these are price fister faucets. Far more than pretty faces, they're forged with a heart of solid brass. So you'll discover they're very fuss-free. All this at prices that make them a find, a real find. So do yourself a favor, get a Price Vista, the fabulous faucet with a funny name. As members of the American Bowling Congress, these men receive valuable benefits. In sanctioned leagues, they know their games count, and standard rules help the fun along. Awards give them proper recognition. They get their shot at national competition, and they're helping our country's Team USA. When these members go bowling, they know being organized is more fun. Get in league with America! Join the ABC! Several Columbia 300 executives on hand for this one this evening. The lovely Connie Smoot in the middle, and on her left, John Rizzo, the senior vice president of Columbia 300. And Brian Flanner, the vice president of sales on her, her right. He's young for vice president, isn't he? You know, that's what happens when you sell all those bowling balls, right? 
Kowalik trying to loosen up the old arm swing. Getting a little feel, trying to get those fingers in the ball. He trails by 13 here in the seventh. in between there. <laughs> I'm glad you picked, said that, not me. Picked up that speed and... Um, no, boy, big shot. I think key shot of the match coming up right now for Kowalik. He just needs to strike to put the pressure on Wall. See the scoreboard there? You can see one strike here is going to cut it to a three-pin lead. Lane. It was his base shot of the match. My thoughts exactly, Dan. Just watch the speed. Watch the follow through. A little shotgun to the right there. That's his ace shot when he does that. Wacko. Is it going to hold? Yeah. Ooh. Almost looked like Chi Chi with the sword there after the birdie. Walden trying to answer the call. Going to need some help. And oh, the six spin obliges and just taps out the tank. That was almost identical to the strike he got in 1985 when he beat Kowalik on that right lane. He just loved to have that tip. Of course, all that action taking place at the Hall of Fame lanes in the Hall of Fame city, Canton, Ohio, which is where we were last week, where Earl Anthony captured his first senior championship. You're wondering where Earl finished this week. Well, he didn't finish anywhere in San Antonio because he didn't bowl in the event. He had something else scheduled. Much to the relief of several of the other senior players involved. A lot of room. There it comes. Oh, boy, did you see that 10-pin snap out of there in a hurry? He's got to be one of the strongest senior players physically. I'd like to see an arm wrestling match between him and John Hersina. Ooh, boy. Yeah, that would be a good one. They're both very strong in the upper body. Kowalik in a must-strike situation. Has to strike here. A lot of room, too much room. Almost tripped out the two, but you're right. He shakes his head on the way back, and I think he realized about three, three boards at least too far to the right. He huh? just lost it off his hand. Man. He lost it off the thumb and, and never got the lift and the loft that he needed. Right at the two pin, no trouble. Here's the shot. Watch it just kind of fall off the hem right there, boom, boom. And then way out to about the third board there and just no lift on it with the hand at all and it just had no chance to get back and still the pins are crumbling around. He got nine out of it, which was uh, fortunate then. Well, he's got a possible 235 if he uh, strikes out in the 10th, which normally would be good enough to win, but I don't think it'll happen here tonight. Six jumps up, and now this one's over. Yeah, it certainly won't happen now. Wow. Well, an excellent week comes to a screeching halt for Dayton's Bob Kowalik. Well, he's still looking for that first senior title, and we're assured that we're going to have no new senior titleist this week. It's going to be a repeat champion of someone. So Kowalik, who won the opening game over Handegard, shoots 212, and... Uh, he will more than likely finish in the number four slot this week, right where he qualified. It's a good one for him. Billy Walden, though, is uh, rare to go. And has a great line on both lanes. Strike out here for what, 269? A little tighter angle. Well, this time doesn't quite get the help from the six pin. Didn't need it. If he didn't need it, he'd be <laughs> carried it. Yeah, you're probably right. Well, he's been involved in teaching several professionals through the years, out of all many of the players on the tour. Changes ball, shoots the spare. No problem. So Walden with a possible 248. 
pretty good game right out of the gate. Just wonder, yeah. what, wonder what Weber's thinking about over there. Yeah. <laughs> thinking, I've bowled this, uh, this tough guy from Troy a number of times in the old Midwest region. These two are no strangers to each other. This one, he gives a little more room. Ringing 10 this time. Well, Bob Kowalik, $3,500. Handshake for Billy Walden, the final 247 to 212. An excellent game for Walden. He'll advance into the semifinal game here in San Antonio. What's the best brokerage account for an active investor? Ask a Schwab customer. With my Schwab One asset management account, my money's never idle. When I sell a stock or I get a dividend, my cash instantly starts earning income. And it keeps on earning until I make my next investment. When I need to get to my cash or take out a loan, I just use my Schwab Visa or write a check. Schwab One makes it easy. All my financial moves are right here. And one simple statement. Now, you might expect to pay a lot of money for an account this handy, and not with Schwab One. There's no monthly fee. Now, that's, that's real value. To get your free booklet and an application for the Schwab One Asset Management account, call toll-free 800-848-8900. That's 800-848-8900. Call now for your free Schwab One booklet. More than 7,000 miles was spanned by more than 1,000 bowlers as more than $1 million was up for grabs on this summer's PBA Summer Tour. It all began in Las Vegas, home of the $100,000 Showboat Senior Invitational. And what better beginning than the final clash between two of the game's greats, Dick Weber and Carmen Salvino. Weber rolled the clutch shot when needed and walked off with the opening title of the summer season. Dublin, California served as the opening site for the regular tour the following week. The $130,000 Kessler Open. Brian Alpert, just 21 years old, showed the poise of a veteran and claimed his first ever PBA title with a championship win over Ray Valdivino. The tour then headed north the following week, more than 1,300 miles into Washington State for the finals of the $115,000 Seattle Open. Tom Kreitz, despite teaming with Amleto Monticelli for the lowest scoring match of the summer, 184 to 175, gathered his game after that and climbed from the number four position to beat George Branham the third in the final. Another major trek across the country, close to 1,400 miles to Arizona, followed the next week, the $140,000 Miller Lite Challenge. Pete McCourtick, 15 years without a PBA title, going into the 88 campaign, won his second in just five outings, defeating Walter Ray Williams Jr. in the final. McCourtick had won on the spring tour in Fresno earlier. And then it was back to California, Riverside to be exact, for the $130,000 Kessler Classic. Sam Macaroon qualifying fifth, strung together four victories to become the only bowler this summer to win from the bottom position. Macaron would then continue his tour first four weeks later in the $130,000 Molson Golden Bowling Challenge at Windsor, Ontario to become the summer tour's first two-time winner. The summer circuit also stopped in Austin, Texas, where top-seeded Scott Devers claimed the top prize at the $130,000 Columbia 300 Open. At Green Bay, Wisconsin, in the $125,000 Lamode Open, Dave Husted, three times in the championship round this summer, finally claimed a first prize paycheck. It was week number seven, however, the $150,000 Hammer Open, which offered the summer's biggest thrill. Amleto Monticelli strung together ten straight strikes. For number eight, got a little... And just this slight miss was the difference between a high game of 287 and that of a possible perfect 300. Oh, my, my, my. The two Despite the high score, it was David Ozio who walked off with the first place prize money. The seniors then took over the spotlight from there. Top seeds Carmen Saldino and Randy Peterson combined to win the $140,000 Seniors Touring Pro Doubles in Buffalo. And then the following week in Canton, the game's best finally got his due. After a record 41 national tournament titles, Earl Anthony finally put it all together and claimed his first ever senior title, the $115,000 Ebonite PBA Senior Invitational. And that leaves us here in San Antonio, where tonight, 
the final chapter of the 88 summer tour on ESPN will be written. And this man may just be the author. He's the top seed, Tita Semez, and we'll be back to chat with our tournament leader right after this timeout. Do you know how to work a golf ball? How to slice around a tree or poke on a dog leg left? Hi, I'm Tom Watson. I recently wrote an article about that in Golf Digest. It's a magazine that completely covers the game. Shots, strategy, equipment, people. It's all in Golf Digest. If you're looking for new clubs, a better ball, Golf Digest delivers. Top playing professionals Nicholas, Kite, Langer, teachers like Toski and Flick take you shot for shot from the driver through the putter. If anything can take strokes off your handicap, it's Golf Digest. It also tells you about the personalities that make the game so great. Sound good? Now here is how you can get Golf Digest. Call toll-free 800-622-3488 for a year of Golf Digest. Only $12.77. 46% off the newsstand price, and you'll receive as a bonus tips from the tour, free. Call 800-622-3488 now. Be a winner. Read Golf Digest. All the names, all the games, all the time. ESPN, the Total Sports Network. Mike Durbin back here at Country Lanes with our tournament leader this week, Tita Semez. Tita, congratulations so far on your great bowling. First question I've got for you, you're in great shape. I don't think you weigh 10 pounds more now than you did 30 years ago. How do you do that? I have kids at age 50 who run to the store for baby food and diapers, that's all. That's what my mother-in-law makes me do. You recommend that to others? No, I wouldn't recommend it, but I got a great life. I love my wife and everybody like that, and she keeps me in good shape, too. I bet she does. Last week, you missed the telecast by just four pins, uh, right down to the last ball. I know you must have been disappointed. That's the only one you've missed out of the last six uh, senior tournaments. I was very disappointed last week, but, Mike, it's going to happen out here. What I did was uh, I came into this town, and I just got myself a little bit more pumped up, and that's why I'm bowling good this week. Tita, throughout your career, you've been basically a part-time player, an outstanding part-time player. You're on the ABC ballot for their Hall of Fame, the PBA ballot for its Hall of Fame. Have you ever fantasized of what it would have been like if you'd have been a full-time player? Mike, in my younger days, I had a construction job in New York City, and, I, and it was good pay in those days. And uh, for me to take off full-time, and uh, it might have cost me my job, and, and there was no guarantee for me to come out here full-time. One more question. You have maybe a chance of bowling your doubles teammate, Dick Weber, in the championship match. Uh, what do you think of that? That would be the greatest thing in the world for me. Uh, Dick and I are very good friends. And uh, I'm going to do my best against him. If he wins, that's great. If I win, I'm sure he feels the same for me. Well, Tita says he's ready for Dick Weber, but it may be Billy Walden. Back to you, Denny. Well, as well as Tita has bowled all week long, whether it's Weber or Walden, I have a feeling that they'll have their hands full. We'll to the semifinal game here in San Antonio in just one minute. You've put it off too long, haven't you? You meant to check out a new car, but never got around to it. Now you're afraid to go out in public. <laughs> Since 1915, Hess Ford has been supplying you with quality new and used cars and trucks. We've built the business on trust. That's why for just a dollar down, you can drive home in a new car or truck tonight. From Hess Ford, your dollar down dealer in Hershey. This should give you some idea of the difference between beer and Genesee Cream Ale. Smooth Genesee Cream Ale. It's not the same old brewski. There's a level of performance that separates the good from the great. That's why Carmen Salvino designed the Ebonite Thunderbolt. The exclusive power core increases gyroscopic action for a sharper hook on heavy oil. 
and the Thunderbolt rolls farther before hooking, so it hits harder for less deflection and more striking power. The difference between good and great is the power of the Thunderbolt. When you've got a job to do, go with a winner. True Value Hardware Store, where the Hoover Elite Upright Vacuum is a 40th anniversary special for just $79.99. And this Daisy Perk Up 10 Cup Coffee Maker with a glass carafe for great flavor is just $22.88. Then pick up one of these dependable ITT phones. They're made in the USA with pride. Take your choice, just $29.99. And make True Value Hardware your store of first choice. Well, it's Dick Weber and Billy Walden, as uh, we've mentioned previously. These two players have met many, many, many times in the Midwest region, and so... Uh, I wonder what the score is between the two of them. We should mention also that uh, Dick Weber is the PBA's Midwest Regional Director. Yep. So in other words, if he loses, he probably disqualifies Walden. He won't have a chance to bowl it anymore. Sure. <laughs> or finds him one of the two. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Oh, my. Walden comes out of the gates with a flush city strike on lane 37. And this guy means business. Hey, he seems to have the best angle of attack to the pocket. He's a little deeper than the other players. Dick Weber, a svelte, 155 pounds, 5'10". Of course, that's about 30 pounds heavier than he was in the golden years, huh? 155? That's what it says. Hmm. I wonder who wrote that. Opening shot. He's going to carry the Weber wall shot. Not quite. Leaves the tickle seven. Tell you what, we have had some fun with Mr. Weber over the last couple of years, haven't we? What a great guy. Especially the last couple of weeks. Yeah, we have. <laughs> We've poked a little fun, and of course, he's uh, basically put together a lawsuit naming you and I for defamation of character. On the strength of his bowling ball, yeah. That's yes, right. Uh, All I told Mr. Weber was, well, let the ball be our guide, which is what Harry Golden has said through the years, and we'll just have to wait and see. I told him all he has to do is, is rip a few racks as his wife Juanita looks on and we'll start talking about his powerful bowling ball. Yeah. What a great sense of humor he's had through the years and all the traveling and all the pressures of having to be one of the top players in the world, but uh, he still enjoys it, I think, now more than ever. Well, some people just have class written all over him, and Dick Weber is one of those people. A little more speed. This one goes past the pocket. And how in the world does the 7-8 stand? Well, Weber's going to have to pull one of the tricks out of the bag to convert this one. Real good speed, but uh, watch his hand go over the top of the ball. And it just never gets into a roll. Slides by. And comes off the sideboard, knocks down the 2-pin, and leaves the 7-8. I don't know which would be more difficult. I think this is an easier split than the 2-7-8 would be. Weber has to go to work early, and he just fits it inside. Well, you don't win 30 championships without making those kind of clutch shots. He's always been a great split maker, and this was made right now. When he knew it, the rest of us knew it. Of course, one might say the reason why he's such a good split maker is because he's left a few through the years. Well, we all leave a few, but uh, we don't all convert them. Yeah, you're right. He's made more than his share. Needed that one, though, really, to kind of stay in the early going of this match because Walden's had the hot hand right back at him with a clutch double. And Weber right now probably sitting on the bench realizing, hey, I got to get started in a hurry here. I'm going to be behind. And Billy Walden making a superb shot here. Right over about that 10th board. And his reaction is down on the knee, and I don't think he's having any trouble getting up then. Nope. Little tongue-in-cheek comment by myself a couple of weeks ago. Raised a little ire from the senior professionals. Thought that I was poking a little fun at him, and I wasn't. Just an observation on my part. It's all right. Just keep sending those cards and letters. No problem. <laughs> What a great shot there. He can circle that ball, and he gets back and hits with authority. And basically, I tell you, unless he makes an errant shot, that's all he's going to leave is 10 pins. Change his balls for the spare conversion. Yeah, excellent double. Solid 10 there. Well, he had seven strikes in game number two, in which he disposed of Bob Kowalik. 
finish at 247. Weber toweling off a little bit, and I think Dick feeling the pressure early in this one. Look at that. Over the year, just, uh, I thought it was more times than that. That's yeah, kind of hard to believe. He won 10 of the first 23 PBA events ever staged. That's nearly half. Won three in a row at one time. Needs to get started. Like that one much better. He's relaxed a little bit, I think. And uh, I think this is really a key shot for him on 37 to get the double and get out of the gate. I do, too. I agree with you. And this is the old famous Weber shot where he appears to come up at the line, arm goes to the right, and the ball goes solid in the 1-3 pocket. <laughs> and everybody's been saying for 30 years, how does he do that? Instinct. Double cuts the lead to just one. Wow, that was the adjustment for the two pin, and wow, four, six, ten, and it was a crucial shot. We were talking about only the fourth frame, but now he's going to have a lot of trouble making this split. <laughs> Appeared to be a decent shot. The ball hooks right now, and it's no, it's a no-no all the way through. Well, he went for the conversion and picked off only the 10, so he does give away a little bit of count. But uh, Billy Walden will have to wait just a moment or so. He leads by 25 here in the semifinal game. Someone once said the best way to follow football action is to follow the quarterback's arm. This quarterback's arm belongs to Jim Kelly, and he's holding a copy of the Sporting News, which is really the best way to follow football action. I've been reading the sporting news for 12 years now, and when it comes to inside information, this is the next best thing to a coach's meeting. The sporting news for total team coverage, college and pro. More football facts and stats than any other sports weekly, plus hot news on baseball, basketball, and hockey. Take it from this quarterback. The sporting news is America's favorite way to follow football action, and now delivered right to your door at a 75% savings. Call 1-800-638-1200 and get 55 big issues of the Sporting News for four easy payments of just $750. You'll save 75% off the cover price, save 50% off the regular subscription rate. So call now 1-800-638-1200. That's 1-800-638-1200. All the games, all the time. ESPN, the total sports network. Billy Walden is up. He leads by 25. And uh, if he throws a couple of strikes here, Mr. Weber's really going to feel some heat in San Antonio. Well, plus, uh, Dick, who picked a finish on lane 37, is yet to get close to the 1-3 pocket on that lane. Tell you what, he looks awful strong to me. Well, I know that you really liked his shot and his reaction during the practice session. But uh, one more strike here, and he's got uh, Weber against the ropes, and he's throwing all the leather. He's got him in trouble. I think almost all the uh, bowling aficionados right now would agree with three top bowlers on the senior tour are Dick Weber, Tita Semez, and Carmen Salvino, and you can put them in any order that you want. Two of the three Walden has to defeat in order to win this championship. He may just do it. Nice acceleration again. The wall shot, not quite. Seven pin stands as Weber's probably breathing a sigh of relief. Well, that keeps Weber barely alive. He's got to start striking. You can't win with spares against Billy Walden tonight. So many people to thank uh, throughout the summer tour, all of the technical crews that helped work with us from coast to coast. Want to pat all those folks on the back for bringing you all the pictures and the sights and the sounds of the 1988 PBA Summer Tour. It's been a lot of fun for us. Also our outstanding light, lighting director, Gary Lingenfelder, who uh, traveled from coast to coast and 
carried everything but uh, all the nuts and bolts and to get the lights on. Our good friend uh, Bobby as well, his assistant. So I want to thank all those folks for their fine efforts. Interesting how many, so many times we see a bowler pick the finish on a certain lane. <laughs> he just drills the other lane and can't touch the lane he picked the finish on. Must be psychological. It must be, but uh, you wonder sometimes. Weber has always, throughout his career, though, wanted to get out of the gate quick, put the pressure on the opponent, finish the match, and get his score posted and say beat it. And the double here cuts it to 15 and uh, applies a little bit of pressure anyway. I think he moved left. Well, he's just lost on lane 37. He did move left, but he threw the ball left also. He didn't give it room, and 6, 7, 10, he has to convert this to have any chance to stay in this match. He's had three shots on 37 and had three splits. Well, let's see if Weber can come up with a little more magic. He converted the 7, 8 in the second frame. 6, 7, 10 here, staring at him on lane 37. He'll give it a run. Oh, my. Just nearly picked it off. But Weber again, two splits in a row on the left-hand lane, and the door swung wide open now for Troy, Missouri's Billy Walden. Yeah, Weber's made it easy for him. It's nice and easy to get that arm swing loosened up when your opponent has two opens in the first six frames. Your opponent starts playing tit-tat-toe, and... The yep. circles out do the X's. Uh. Plus, you're right. Billy Walden's bad shots have been shaky seven pins, a ten pin here and there. I don't know if he's missed the pocket yet. I don't think I he don't, has. Don't think he has yeah. Well, he left, left the dinner bucket in the first okay. frame. Uh, took yep. forever to set up. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> then he made it. But you're right. That's the only shot where he's missed the pocket. Everything else has pretty much been right there. Also, like to uh, thank Joe Antonor, the commissioner of the PBA, the founder, Eddie Elias. For all of their help here in 88, giving us the opportunity to spend some time with not only the seniors, but the touring players. It's been a joy for us. Billy's getting all the bad breaks this game, but he's still 39 pins ahead. I mean, double tap, strike tap, strike tap. But two tens and a seven. Once again, nice conversion of the spares. So Walden at this point in time, not cutting any slack. Weber trails by 39. He'll need a miracle, but uh, stay tuned. We'll be back with more of the semifinal game after this. Are you still using this kind of drill? Then why use this kind of screwdriver? Now there's Torque Driver. There's no power screwdriver like it. The patented clutch measures out extra power when you need it. It's so powerful it can drive home this four-inch giant in two and a half seconds. Yet you can use it on the most delicate veneer. Use it for large screws or small screws, slotted screws or Phillips screws. And it removes screws just as easily. There's more. You also get this amazing adapter that turns any socket set into a power wrench. It even removes frozen nuts in seconds. Plus, you get Total Tool that cuts glass and carpet, sharpens knives, and strips wire. It'll last for years. It's all yours for only $19.95. Order now. Have your credit card ready and call toll-free. 1-800-554-9000. That's 1-800-554-9000. Or send $19.95 plus $4 for shipping to Torque Driver. The O-Box 121 Plainville, Connecticut, 06062. Golf could be the most frustrating sport of all. Even the pros struggle some days, then succeed the next. Follow all the ups and downs inside the PGA Tour every Tuesday on ESPN. Dick Weber trailing by 39 in the Lone Star State. He still has a possible 210. He's going to have to pull out all the stops to get there. Six in a row he needs to do that. just one of those games for Dick. We all have them every now and then, and he's got the embarrassing thing of having it on national television. He comes back and 
That's a couple of words for Billy and Dick with a smile on his face. Believe me, as intense a competitor as he is right now, he's uh, he's struggling a little bit. And now the machine won't give him his ball back. He says, hey, it's bad enough that I got all these splits. I got to wait to shoot this thing. Oh, brother. Oh. oh, he had a couple of words for our television coordinator, Chuck Pisano. And uh, I'm not sure what Pisano's retort was, but Weber had a bigger smile after he had spoken to Chuck. It gives us an opportunity also to pat him on the back. Uh, I don't know how he puts up with me year in and year out, but he's our outstanding television coordinator. He's the executive producer of the Bowling News, and uh, he fights with me each and every week. But we managed to put that thing together, and I, we've got a very nice show here this evening. I'd like to thank him uh, publicly. There he's, I think he said, hi, Mom. I'm not sure. <laughs> Might have said, hi, Dad. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, he's done a great job for us. We appreciate everything. He's done. Oh, Weber this time finally hits the pocket, and guess what? Leaves the tip. <laughs> and Juanita has seen a few of those through the years, and uh, she doesn't care at this point. Uh, well, it's it's trouble when you got more circles than you do spares or strikes. I mean, if he makes this, it's going to be even. Yeah, he's got that get smart number going in the seventh, 99. <laughs> <laughs> Not exactly what he was hoping uh, for. Bowling News will be coming up uh, after this game, and we'd also like to thank all the various organizations throughout the country that have submitted information to us, the ABC, the WIBC, the YABA, and that's just, uh, that show has grown and grown in popularity, and we can't do it without uh, the help of everybody involved, and uh, we want to thank everybody, Mike and I, for writing in and watching this summer. We'll be back next year. Everything goes according to plan. According to plan. Yeah. Ah, yes, Kevin Chippy on the left, public relations director who has more frequent flyer miles, I think, than Gary Player. And then, of course, the great one, Harry Golden, national tournament director. And, boy, he has seen some road time this year. And Goose told me he's out over 30 tournaments in. And a deserved rest coming up for the beloved Harry Golden. As Walden cross alley spares it. And uh, Billy Walden up by 49. And Walden, I guess you could say, is waltzing into the title game. Waltzing Matilda or waltzing Walden, huh? He knows uh, the title match will be a real gritty game, though. Tita Semez doesn't give up anything easily. Well, this one's kind of put everybody to sleep here as uh, yep. the enthusiasm of the crowd is all drained out. We were anticipating a high-scoring match between these two as Walden has just gotten wrapped to death. That is his fourth pin pin of this game. But it hasn't mattered. Weber unable to put any pressure on him at all. Of course, the next senior event whoops, on ESPN will be the uh, Treasure Coast PBA Open. And that event will be seen on November 9th, a Wednesday night at 9.30 Eastern Time. A little special senior event uh, to kick off the PBA Fall Tour. Weber trying to uh, just finish this one out nicely. And uh, he'd like to strike out yeah. 179 out of it. So, you know, he told me that he and Juanita, after... Uh, Four or five weeks at home of planning a nice long vacation in Hawaii. Whoever trying to walk one out, uh, going to have to come back and shoot the solid 10. 30 career titles. What hasn't he won? Only one key championship. The Tournament of Champions. Which, which his won. son has won. So it's in the Weber family. Right. Well, somewhere along the way. Didn't he finish second once? Twice. Twice. First two years that we had it, he led it both times and lost. No kidding. And I know he made the championship round at least another couple times, didn't he? Yes, he lost uh, in 1969, uh, I believe he was on the telecast, that Dave Davis won. Mm -hmm. First two years, he lost uh, to Billy Hardwick, and then the next time he lost to uh, Wayne Zahn. Pitch in the pants a little bit. How many times do you see Dick Weber shoot uh, 150 or 160? Not very often. Yes, I've seen his fair share of splits this evening. He's already got four. Let's not say anything else. Thank goodness. No four nines. Just a four bit. <laughs> yeah. Now a saddle of week nonetheless for Dick Weber, who will collect $4,000. He'll be back next year. 
And uh, he has now become the first senior bowler to win over $100,000 in a career. Hurry! <laughs> he's a player of firsts through the years. You know, he's first to do a lot of things. <laughs> he's going to be first out the door here. I thought he's going to be first to miss the forfeit. <laughs> You know, he's the first to win tournaments in four different decades. Sure. PBA titles in four decades. Well, can he win one in five? It's definitely possible. Oh, I think he's going to have a shot at it somewhere. Yeah. Wouldn't that be something? There he is, and he applauds himself. 157. It wasn't pretty, but, hey, Dick Weber, the gentleman that he is, will forget about it as soon as he walks out the door. And when he comes back... Don't be surprised if he shoots 257 the next trip. Billy Wallen trying to get his uh, concentration. Still razor sharp there for the coming up title match. And every ball in the pocket left four 10 pins. Missed one of them. Strike out here for 206. I think this crowd's ready to have some fun in this final game. Well, we need more than 150 to have a little fun. Well, and, uh, yeah. We don't want to have this uh, summer telecast in with a whimper. Nope. Nope. We've seen some great, great bowling this summer on ESPN. And I'd venture to say the title match will be a good one. Tita Semez and that man right there, Billy Walden. Don't forget, coming up next on Sports Center, join John Saunders and Bob Lee, the two top stories this evening. Frank Viola wins number 20. That's no surprise. And Lawrence Taylor speaks out. Ooh, I wonder what he had to say. Stay tuned. You'll find out. Trip of the four for Walden, who strikes out on the 10th. And so that's it for Weber. Walden advances into the championship game against our top seed, Tita Semez. Before we get to that, though, polling news. Whenever I see a scene like this, I wonder, did they have a will? As a court reporter, I know if you die without a will, the courts take over and make important decisions for you. Who gets your money, your property? Who gives away your life savings? Who will be your children's guardian? With no will, the courts decide everything, and your estate pays. Plus, if the state can't find any heirs, they keep your property. Don't worry. The Nationwide Will Plan has developed wills that are legal in all states and can be completed by you in just minutes by following very easy instructions. Call now. Only Nationwide Wills offer you these special features. Forms for gifts. Provisions for distribution of personal items. Forms for children's trusts. Call this number now and also receive this handsome folder for your legal documents. Don't let a stranger make the most important decisions of your life. Call now. Welcome to the final edition of the Bowling News for the Summer Tour. Tonight's championship round finals of the $75,000 Columbia 300 Senior Open wraps up senior play at least until October. So without further ado, let's find out who is atop the leaderboard as far as those career money earning standings are concerned. Ah, yes, it's Mr. Dick Weber. He will surpass the $100,000 career earnings barrier regardless of where he finishes here at Country Lanes this evening. Meanwhile, Carmen Salvino, by virtue of his sixth place finish here this week, is currently number two, but not for long. Because after tonight's play, Tita Semez will have at least $79,000, even if he ends up on the wrong side of the scoreboard. Billy Walden is also climbing up the ladder, while Les Sykes currently fills out the top five. Now, these seniors and more will have a chance to add even more money to their bank accounts this coming fall, because ESPN will be telecasting the finals of the $65,000 Treasure Coast PBA Senior Open from Fort Pierce, Florida. And that show, of course, on Wednesday, November 9th, beginning at 9.30 Eastern Time. Now, even though ESPN Summer Tour will come to an end in San Antonio here this evening, the PBA National Tour resumes in Rochester, New York, with a Kodak Invitational beginning on Wednesday, October 26th. The pros will also be stopping in Indianapolis the following week before heading off to the Brunswick Memorial World Open in November. And then, of course, the 1988 Fall Tour will then make two final stops in Columbus, Ohio, and also in Taylor, Michigan. 
The Ladies Pro Bowlers Tour on ESPN will kick off a six-week fall tour beginning October 5th with the championship round finals of the AMF Virginia Classic. The ladies will then head to Buff or make that Baltimore for the Hammer Eastern Open and then, of course, travel to Rockford, Illinois for the Hammer Midwest Open. The final three tournaments will then be staged in Houston, DeSoto, Texas, and also in Las Vegas. All of the LPBT's telecasts in the fall on ESPN will be live on Wednesday nights beginning at 9.30 Eastern Time. Here's a look at Roger Zeller, founder, president, and chairman of the board of Columbia 300 Incorporated. He was recently honored as the man of the year by the Billiard and Bowling Institute of America. Roger is also heavily involved in a number of civic activities here in the San Antonio area. And here's a look at some of these successful participants in the local qualifying for the annual AVCO National Family Bowling Tournament. A record 130,000 players attempted to qualify in 49 states, including Canada. The finals will be held this week in Washington, D.C., where $33,000 in scholarships will be awarded. And coming up on September 18th in Seoul, South Korea, America's national amateur champion, Mark Lewis, will be one of just 24 players vying for Olympic gold. Bowlers from around the world had to qualify first in their own countries and then in this FIQ pre-Olympic qualifier, which was held in Apopka, Florida. The finals of the Brunswick International Showdown will be telecast on ESPN on Wednesday night, September 14th, beginning at 9.30 Eastern Time. And also the finals of the exciting Team USA Bowl Down, which can be seen on ESPN, will be aired on Wednesday evening, September 7th. Also, all that action beginning at 9.30 Eastern Time. And over the past couple of weeks, the PBA Regional Tour has been very busy from coast to coast. So as we wrap up the final edition of the Bowling News, let's take a, let's take a look at the latest results on the PBA Regional Tour. Let's take a look now at what's happened uh, thus far at Country Lanes in San Antonio this evening. Bob Qualick defeated John Handegard in game number one. Both players started with a turkey, and then Handegard missed the 6-10, and that turned it all around. It seemed to just take all the air right out of his balloon, and he just struggled hitting the pocket after that. Actually, uh, could have bowled a lot worse than he did at 2-10. Got three strikes in the 10th frame to get that, uh, but uh, Qualick looked strong at that point. Then there was a rematch, if you go all the way back to 85, the PBA Seniors Championship between Billy Walden and Bob Kowalik, and it was a very good match indeed until the latter stages. Well, Walden just kept applying that pressure, just kept throwing every ball in the pocket and getting a lot of strikes. Kowalik tried to stay with him. I think the key shot was the ninth frame when he wasn't able to strike then. Then he had to strike out in the tenth and hope that Kowalik opened. When you're in that position, you're kind of hanging on by a thin thread. And uh, speaking of thin thread and thin ice, Dick Weber was on that pretty much in the semifinal game. Never got untracked, had four different splits. And any time Weber shoots 157, you have to be surprised. Well, Weber came out shaky, and it got worse from then on out. <laughs> and he was just playing tic-tac-toe, and the circles were beating the X's, and 157's an embarrassing score. But Dick just laughed it off, and he's the great champion, the great class gentleman. Like you say, he'll have forgotten about it by the time he gets out the door. All right, Michael, we've come to the end of the PBA Summer Tour on ESPN. Just one championship game left between Tita Semez and Billy Walden, and I know you just loved Walden's reaction in the practice round, and obviously he's won two games here this evening. Well, we said that he had to beat both uh, two of the top three senior players on the tour. Right now, he had to beat both uh, Tita Semez and Dick Weber. He's already disposed of Weber. Tita Semez remains in the, the way for him. Right now, I think Walden's the odds-on favorite. He's throwing every ball in the pocket. 
Tita sometimes gets a little uptight for these championship matches, Danny. What do you think? Well, I would be uptight, too, uh, if I were bowling from the number one position. He's been very quiet. He's been concentrating very hard on the practice pair. I, I think he's a man on a mission, basically, here this evening. If he gets off to a quick start, I like his chances. But I agree with you. Billy Walden is loose. He's pretty much scoped out the championship pair. So uh, I think Semez is going to have to get off to a fast start. Well, you know, the, the biggest thing that Tita has in his favor is that I'm thinking that Walden can win. So with my track record, Tita's got a definite chance. <laughs> All right, so what about Tita's strategy? If he doesn't throw a couple of strikes early, will he move quickly or pretty much try and make the fine-tune adjustments? He gets six practice balls over here right now, Dan. If he doesn't find the lanes right now in these six practice balls, I don't think he's going to make the adjustment during the game. He's got to come right out be hitting that pocket right away. Well, we'll see if Anthony Tita Semez can capture the $75,000 Columbia 300 Scene. The championship game is coming up next only on ESPN. Everything is free right now at National Bedrooms. For a very limited time, water beds and regular beds are free of charge for 12 long months. Pay nothing for day, brass, and adjustable beds for one full year. Right now at National Bedrooms, the best night's rest of your life is free. You pay no money down, no interest charges, not even one monthly payment. You pay not a dime till this time in 1989. The most outrageous offer ever. Everything is free for a year today at National Bedrooms. Don't go to bed without us. Come see the sunrise, high on the hill at Sunrise Terrace. For your approval, Autry Zinc Realtors presents Phase One, a stunning collection of custom-designed homes carefully planned so that no two are alike. Located in peaceful Elizabethtown, close to the 283 bypass, a convenient commute to Harrisburg or Lancaster. Phase Two is now under construction, so call the Autry Zinc office today, but hurry, building lots are scarce, and you don't want to miss your chance to see the sunrise every morning at Sunrise Terrace. Looking for a better job? Every week, the National Business Employment Weekly lists hundreds of jobs. Jobs in management, jobs in sales, jobs in almost every profession. So relax. Looking for a better job? Every week, the National Business Employment Weekly lists hundreds of high-paying jobs all across the country. So relax. Looking for a better job? Every week, the National Business Employment Weekly has articles on job interviewing, writing a better resume, and how to succeed once you get the job. So relax. Pick up the National Business Employment Weekly at a newsstand or call 800-372-3000 and receive eight issues by first-class mail for only $35. 800-372-3000. The National Business Employment Weekly. Don't make a career move without it. Only two remain. Tita Semez, the top seed, and Billy Walden, the challenger. Walden with a hot hand right now, Mr. Durbin. Well, we said his shot looked good in the practice balls then, and he's uh, burying out that observation. With one senior championship to his credit. Looking for number two. And Tita's chosen the strategy of wanting to finish first and post his score. The same result, basically. That's how he started against Weber. Billy, a little extra loft out uh, four or five feet out of that lane. Wacko, right solid in the 1-3 pocket. Opening offering from 54-year-old Tita Semez, who led this tournament from start to finish. Now he's trying to finish it off. Wow, he gave that some room to the right, and it came back. A smile from Semez, and uh, he gave that shot a little room. Trust is a must. Weber would know that. There he is. The man between us has cooled off just a little bit after that 157 game. Joining us in the uh, the booth, Mr. Dick Weber. Yes, my grandson called and said, he, uh, Grandpa, I don't want to bowl with you anymore. <laughs> Gee whiz. <laughs> Wasn't that a horrible exhibition? But I, I wanted to show the people how to, you know, the pros bowl bad once in a while. Sure. Well, you've always been a versatile player. <laughs> Made that 7-8. 
Semez looking for the double to get things started. And a beautiful shot. Dick, you probably know Keita's game as well as anybody else's. What do you think his chances are? Oh, I think they're good because he's bowled well all through the tournament. The, the first day he bowled real well, sec, uh, second, first and second block. And then the, uh, the third, uh, the second day of the uh, third and fourth block, he just went wild. And uh, knowing his game real well, he's going to stroke well, and he's going to put a little pressure on uh, Billy, I feel. Walden trying to answer the challenge on the right-hand lane. Four shots and four X's, Mr. Durbin. I wanted to ask Mr. Weber that uh, you chose to finish on that left lane, yet you struggled for most of the game. What was the problem over there? Well, Mike, I felt uh, that uh, I knew the lane well, but I just eased up every shot, it seemed like. I, when I went through with the ball, I never was crisp with the, with the follow-through or the uh, downswing, and I was, I was too easy, and that made me turn early and uh, rear up a little bit, too. I mean, and the ball went left to target. Yes, you were getting a lot of penalties there. <laughs> Billy Walden averaging 226 this evening gets by with just the 5'8 there, almost left the bucket. Yeah, it's the first time he's missed the pocket since he left the bucket in the first frame against uh, Bob Kowalik. Breaks it out, leaves only the 5'8. You notice that he's playing like three, four boards further left than Semez. So he's playing just a little bit tighter line, can't swing it quite as far as T is. Dick, uh, your observations. I know that uh, when you first started bowling on the senior tour in 81, it was probably a little easier to win. Uh, a lot more competition out here right now. It certainly is, Danny. You know, and I, I'm, I'm glad to see the competition come on because it makes our senior tour that much better and more comp uh, competition out there. But, uh, you know, so many people say, well, I can beat the seniors now. They're over 50 years of age. Well, we welcome all those people that think they can beat the seniors. Come on out and give it a try. Mm -hmm. It's really a lot of fun, a lot, uh, interesting, and the competition is great. Well, the great thing is, too, now you got that rookie Anthony out there. <laughs> We can send him home, though. <laughs> Tita Semez leads by two after the re-rack on the right-hand lane. Working on a double. And a turkey now. <clears throat> we talked about he had the six practice balls, and if he came out strong, look at the speed. Good speed on this shot. Wasn't as far right as the last shot, but the speed held it in the 1-3 pocket. That ninth been thought about standing. And Mike, he's, al he's also uh, uh, used more speed now than he did in practice. And uh, even before the show started, uh, he uh, used a little less speed then. But the uh, adrenaline's flowing now. Exactly. Exactly. 4-4. Four, four. All the room in the world. Oh, well, he now leads by 22 as Weber and Durbin never threw a ball that hooked that much throughout their entire careers. And there you see it one more time. Semez with yet another strike. We'll be back to see if he continues the string right after this. What's the best brokerage account for an active investor? Ask a Schwab customer. With my Schwab One asset management account, my money's never idle. When I sell a stock or I get a dividend, my cash instantly starts earning income. And it keeps on earning until I make my next investment. When I need to get to my cash or take out a loan, I just use my Schwab Visa or write a check. Schwab One makes it easy. All my financial moves are right here. And one simple statement. Now you might expect to pay a lot of money for an account this handy. And not with Schwab One. There's no monthly fee. Now that's, that's real value. To get your free booklet and an application for the Schwab One Asset Management account, call toll-free 800-848-8900. That's 800-848-8900. Call now for your free Schwab One booklet. Golf, a sport for all seasons. And 12 months a year, ESPN brings you the best of the PGA Tour. Coverage from three of golf's Grand Slam events, the finest Lady Linksters, and those swinging seniors. Join the world's greatest golfers for heart-stopping and heart-breaking thrills. All year long, for live coverage that's far better than par for the course, ESPN. Billy Walden finds himself uh, in an unenviable position. He's trailing basically for the first time in this one. Well, Tita's come out and done exactly what he needed to do, take charge of this match. Let's see if Billy can respond. And he does. 
Big shot coming up, though, right now. He's got to keep the pressure on Tita Smith. Remember last week, Earl Anthony came out with four straight strikes and then just hung on the rest of the game. And even though John Hersina had bowled a great game against Handyguard the match before, he was unable to do it against the great Earl Anthony. Walden's got to be thinking a little bit like Tita. Tita's just bowled so well all week long. Tita's got the confidence. The last time he did this, he won the tournament down in Fort Pierce. So big shot for Walden right now. And he didn't throw it well. You know, Mike, uh, when he bowled me, he had problems with his thumb. He couldn't get his thumb all the way in. So uh, he's having a little thumb problem right now. I suppose it's swelling as he's bowling, Dick? Yes. Yes, it is. See, he just doesn't want to finish. Leaves a 2 4 5 eight. Watch this hand release right here. High backswing. Well, it happens so fast, it's hard to see. Mm -hmm. Boy, twice he's had to shoot the bucket, and both times he's made it. But uh, now an opportunity for Titus Femez to extend the lead. That was a clutch shot in the fifth because it would have been a double for Walden, something to build on. Now he has to hope that Tita just slows down here. Tita just seems to be able to send it as far right as he wants to. start thinking about a few things and a couple more strikes here, Dan. Well, we could always mention the fact that uh, if Tita Semez would continue to strike until we go off the air here this evening, the good folks at True Value Hardware would present him with a check worth $25,000. Would that uh, pass it, him, make him pass Dick Weber in career senior earnings? Yes, it would. I hope he does. Because Weber would you, be number two. You fellas have already tried to put the hex on him, it seems like. You're <laughs> missing it already. That's terrible. That's because we have such confidence in his ability. <laughs> Trying to get halfway home. He stood up on it and he oh. got himself a bit of a break, a little bit of a cave-in, and Semez is still alive. He's got the first six. Well, it's amazing. He's got a tremendous reaction going because this ball goes left of target and goes right on the head. He didn't get that ball nearly as far as he had the other time. Went over the top of it. The head pin comes off the wall and makes those pins dance just like it used to do for Dick Weber. <laughs> Tina holding on for dear life. Crowd reacting to the replay. Walden up quickly now in the sixth. He trails by 42, and there's no time like the present to try and trip the four, and he can't get it done. Well, I told you, in between games, there, the best thing that Tita had going for him was that I thought Walden had a chance to win. You know, and so, I don't want to say this, Dick, but... Who did you pick between Walden and I? He thought you had a great reaction. Oh, thanks, Mike. <laughs> All right, Walden with a spare up, but uh, what's he thinking about right now, Mike? Well, he's thinking that uh, Smez right now is just going at a 240-something clip. If he can just get a few strikes going, you never know what can happen. I mean, he's 43 pins behind, but it starts with one strike. He, the old adage, you know, what uh, Fred Wolf used to say, if you can do it with a pencil, you can do it with a bowling ball. <laughs> Weber remembers that. Oh, yes. <laughs> Wish I had that pencil tonight. <laughs> and the eraser. <laughs> That one's a little slow. It's through the nose, and right now, Billy Walden is thinking second place might not be too bad. Let's see how Tita reacts, though. I mean, the match is virtually over at this point in time, and uh, but the 300 game is still a possibility there. Tita's got to keep that adrenaline going and, and be thinking about the 300. Yeah, he's got to watch the letdown. Of course, he's obviously very much aware of the bonus situation. How many times have you seen fellas let down like that when they had a big lead like that, Mike? You know? It's tough to keep it geared up. And Lada Monticelli started with the first 10 in Edmond, Oklahoma. Maybe we'll finish on a very high note here in San Antonio. His uh, wrist device became unsnapped, <laughs> disengaged. Boy, he again, that came, un there came unsnapped up. again. If he throws a strike now after that happening, because he's got to be thinking, is that going to happen in the middle of my swing? No, he won't. He won't think about that. I would. Give it some room, he says. Oh, yeah. Whoa! <laughs> wow. 
What did I tell you? Oh, this Semez has been bowling like a man possessed all week long. Well, you said he was on a mission. I mean, and... Uh... Seven in a row, even though he didn't look comfortable, this is the result. See the room he gives it. You're right, I only threw a hook like that in my dreams. <laughs> yeah, the problem is you had to wake up, right? I threw one like that in 1959. I heard about that, I never saw it. <laughs> and there were newspaper articles printed up, I heard. This shot in the eighth. Hold it. Some help with a 10. That one crashing a little bit high, and Semez holding on for dear life ends up with a 10 pin in the eighth. Nice round of applause for Tita, who started with seven sterling strikes. Well, he gave us a thrill there for a while. We could have entered on a real, real high note. Yep. He's in the driver's seat right now, though, leads by Route 66. No mistakes now for Semez. A lot of our audience will remember that, but some won't then, Route 66. I nice take a moment now as well to thank our producer, George Smith, and director, Kent Samuel. They have done just a superlative job all summer long and uh, have brought you all the pictures and the stories of the 88 summer tour and done a marvelous job in the process. Hats off to those gentlemen for putting up with Mike Durbin and I for 12 consecutive weeks. And I think Dick has hit the nose nail the nose right on the head here that he's just fighting his release and uh, maybe that thumb just puffed up a little bit and he just wasn't able to get that clean release that he had there going against Kowalik and early against you it certainly did Mike because he had to keep uh, putting his thumb in the th uh, thumb hole to get it down Dick there's a question that I want to ask you in just a moment but uh, we also want to make sure that uh, we promote tonight's Sports Center program John Saunders and also Bob Lee they'll have an in-depth interview with Lawrence Taylor who is uh, facing a suspension right now from the NFL for drug abuse want to make sure you stay tuned Lawrence is going to speak out and tell you his side of the story what a tremendous player and uh, what a difficult fight he has right now Oh, well, see, he's, he's pulled that thumb all the way out, and that's the reason he's getting that early release and, and losing the ball. And lost the speed, yeah, right. right. He's right. just lost that zip he's had. You know what I used to do when that would happen to me, when my thumb would swell up, is I'd take a handkerchief or something, wrap my thumb in it, and then jam it into the ball. That would compress the thumb, and I'd be able to, to throw it for the next shot or two. Or double your thumb up in the thumb hole as much as you possibly can to get that blood out. Ooh. Ooh. Well, not bad. Four out of five. A pretty good run. Some specific numbers, 157 for Billy Walden. And speaking of graphics and numbers, uh, Janice Devine, our graphics operator, hats off to her as well. Everything that you've seen all summer long, she has provided us. We call her Magic Fingers here on the summer tour. And uh, Magic Fingers as well for Tita Semez. Dick Weber, did you ever win a title as easily as Tita's going to get this one here this evening? They just never seem to happen that way. I don't know. I... Um I really can't remember the last two titles I've won was given to me. I stole one from Carmen Salvino not in Las Vegas, and then last year I stole one from J.B. Blaylock, uh, Blaylock uh, when he missed the 10 pin against me. So uh, to keep really that up, we could give you 10 to 20. <laughs> 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 of course, they backed out. Basically, Durbin won all of his by backing in, from what I understand. No, I all count. <laughs> <laughs> nice going, partner. Thanks to Mike Durbin also uh, for a great summer tour and... Uh, I don't know, we, we have a lot of fun and, and uh, create a lot of havoc at times, but uh, I'm hoping, partner, you and I will be back next year to get a chance to chat one more time. And the most thanks, I think, have to go to our viewers for watching and putting up with us, and we uh, hope they've enjoyed that uh, our presentation. We do have a lot of fun doing it. May I say a few words for, on behalf of the PBA members, uh, Denny and Mike? We certainly appreciate your commentary and uh, your instructions and your comments about the different bowlers. I mean, it's been really nice, and thanks to ESPN, too, because uh, yep. it's been uh, oh, yeah. an asset to the Professional Bowlers Association, I feel. Bowling, it's been marvelous on ESPN. A big 1989 coming up. And speaking of uh, large victories, Tita Semez, if you're going to win, you shoot 268. <laughs> That's the way to put the nail in the coffin. He didn't have to do any adjusting during the game, Dan. <laughs> he had him nope. pretty well wired. We pretty much talked about what he was going to have to do to win. And when you come out and start with the first seven, that's a good indication that you're on the right track. Billy Walden trying to finish things up. And uh, for Billy, an outstanding week. A check worth $5,000. But Tita Semez, the winner 
of the $75,000 Columbia 300 Senior Open. And Sumez is picking up on the Seniors Tour PBA-wise like Chichi Rodriguez did on the PGA sure Tour, is. Dick Weber. That's number three for him, and uh, he's closing in on that money, too. Oh, boy. I know Sammy and his family, uh, his wife uh, and family will really appreciate it, though. Oh. oh, what a way to finish. <laughs> well, Billy stunned and shaken, turns around and shakes Tita Sumez's hand. Not exactly what you wanted, 102 pins difference in the title game, but when somebody shoots 260, well, that's what it's all about. Tita with a smile, and we'll be back to talk with Anthony right after this. like soft rock music like we do, you'll love Session's new album called Secret Love. It has 48 soft rock classics by the original artist. Just listen. Some people. You also get great hits by Billy Ocean, James Taylor, The Commodores, and The Moody Blues. Nights in white satin. Love can only be ordered through this special TV offer. Your choice of four records or three cassette tapes for only $19.95. Here's how to order. Call toll-free 1-800-554-9000 or save COD fees by sending $19.95 for four records or three cassette tapes plus $3 shipping and handling to Secret Love, Box 50, Department E, Los Angeles, California. No matter what anyone tells you, the Wall Street Journal cannot make you a success overnight. Which is why we suggest a 13-week subscription. Call 800-372-3000 for this great journal subscription offer. 13 weeks for just $29.75 with a money-back guarantee. 13 weeks, $29.75. Phone 800-372-3000 now for the Wall Street Journal. And welcome back, everyone, to Country Lanes in San Antonio, Texas. Denny Schreiner along with Mike Durbin and uh, Tita Semez, our winner here this evening in a breeze. Well, he made a, a really a mockery of this whole tournament. He just led from, almost from the opening game. We wondered how he would do in the championship match. He answered that question real quick, seven straight strikes. Well, we had a few lopsided games here this evening. We didn't anticipate that because the scores were very good in rounds four, five, and six. Well, we're going to get some of those, then as they happen during this uh, course of our telecast. In our first match, Bob Kowalik beat out John Handigard. This is a strike in the eighth frame. When he gets this, the match is virtually over. Handigard, who started fast with a triple, missed that 6-10 and never could get it together again after that. That's right. The open was in the fourth frame. He struck in the fifth, but was never really able to get loosened up and put any pressure on Kowalik. So Kowalik went on to win game number one and then had to match up with a very hot hand in the second game. Well, Billy Walden came out throwing the ball just superb in that second match, and Kowalik tried to stay with him for a while. But uh, in the end, Walden was just too much for him. Here's a strike in the ninth frame by Billy Walden, and this pretty much put all the pressure on Kowalik. He had to strike out to even make it close. And you see that 10 pin just snap out of there. He was throwing the ball well then, seemed to lose that hand release later on. So the final 247 to 212, and it was seven strikes in that game for Billy Walden. And then I felt pretty much with his reaction, his release, that he would be the favorite as he headed in against Dick Weber. And uh, as it turned out, really, Dick never really able to, to muster much of a game. Well, the legend, Dick Weber, <laughs> didn't quite live up to his uh, advanced billing tonight. He was uh, throwing a lot of splits and a lot of strikes, or not too many strikes. And this is another one of the circles that he threw, the 6 7 10 here. And when he left that, see the hand go over the top of the ball, and he stood up and... Uh, he just said that he never did execute right on that left lane. It wasn't the lane. It was him. But he did make the 7-8 split, right? So we got to give him credit for that. He had plenty of splits to shoot at this evening. Look at all the donuts for Weber there in the semifinal game. And we hear Weber laughing in the background here. <laughs> well, he's having some fun. But boy, the championship game. And Tita Semez started with a first seven. And he just took command of this match from the opening shot. Just throwing strike after strike. Just like that. Solid in the 1-3 pocket. 
Walden seemed to be fighting his hand release that whole last game. It looked like uh, he was pulling his thumb out of the ball, losing speed, and just not having the good hand release he had earlier and couldn't put any pressure on Teeter at all. A brilliant game of 268. That's always good enough to win a championship. We'll be back with a winner here in San Antonio, Tita Semez, after this timeout. When you've got a job to do, go with a winner. True Value Hardware Store. Seal up to five windows drum tight with the 3M window insulator kit, just $9.99. And get a bonus roll of Scotch 35 millimeter film. Brighten areas with GE 75 or 150 watt floodlights, only $244 each. And clean up dry debris or wet spills with the Hoover Double Duty Handback, just $29.99. And make True Value Hardware your store of first choice. Guess who has more of the year's top films, Showtime or HBO? Well, Showtime has outrageous fortune. HBO doesn't. Showtime has stakeout. HBO doesn't. Showtime has Beverly Hills Cop 2, Tin Men, Robocop. HBO doesn't. And only Showtime has exclusive rights to four of the year's top five hits. Showtime exclusives. Here you see them, there you don't. You like to draw, sketch, or doodle? Well, if you do, you'll want to enter this month's art contest from Art Instruction Schools with over $8,000 in prizes. Here's how easy it is. Just call toll-free, and Art Instruction Schools will send you this Draw Me Art folder without cost or obligation. When you receive it, simply draw one of these interesting characters and mail it back to us. Each drawing is individually judged, and five winners are selected each month. The purpose of our contest is to find prospective students who are motivated and like art. Only amateurs are eligible, and complete rules are in the Draw Me folder. So call or write today. It's fun and exciting, and you could be a winner. To receive your free Draw Me Art folder, call this toll-free number or write to Art Contest and give your name, address, and age. Don't delay. Call this number now. all smiles. Tita Semez, the winner of the $75,000 Columbia 300 Senior Open, and I don't blame him, Mike Durbin. He bowled very well. Tita, you, you bowled outstanding. My question is that you seem to be standing left and throwing right. I've never seen you hook the ball as much as you did then. That obviously was your game plan all along. It wasn't my game plan. I come over here with, with, see you're wrong, Mike, but I come over here and I took six practice shots, four practice shots, and I went back over there and I worked on my hand position, and I got my hand to the side of the ball a little bit more, and I think I figured it out. I think you did, too. <laughs> yeah. I, let's bring in Mr. Ron Herman now, the president of Columbia 300 Incorporated. And he has a, a beautiful trophy to present to Mr. Simmons. Thank you, Denny. Tito, we want to give you all of our best. We at Columbia noticed that uh, this is your 28th year in the PBA. It's our 28th year of manufacturing bowling balls. It's a classic. This would have been your 28th 300 game if we could have seen it through. But you did a great job. We're proud of you. Mr. and Mrs. Zeller called up a few minutes ago. They're out of town. They uh, sent their very best regards to you. Pepper Martin came in from his ranch out west of San Antonio to see you, our retired vice president of sales. <laughs> he might do that. We're very proud of you and all the best. I'd like to thank Columbia. Uh, they have been a great company to me all through the years. And I'd like to thank Jamie Brooks for having a tournament this year. And I'd also like to thank Columbia for sponsoring it. Okay, very quickly, Jamie Brooks, the proprietor, with a nice check for Tita Semez. Tita, great, great bowling this week. And on behalf of uh, staff here at Country Lanes, here's a little check for you. Did wonderful. Thank you, Jamie, very much. The only question I have Tita, as if you'd have said you were 28 years old, then I'd have had to question that. We were all out of time here in San Antonio. So long, everybody, and best of luck.
championship round finals of the $75,000 Columbia 300 Senior Open have been brought to you by True Value Hardware. For quality selection and personal attention, make True Value Hardware your store of first choice. And by Bud Light, proud sponsor of the 1988 U.S. Olympic team.